Okay, so in this video I want to talk to you about the union operation and specifically how it contrasts with but is also complementary to uh, the intersect operation. So let's take a look at some of the same geometry with uh, repeated examples here with the different tools so we can compare and contrast them directly. So let's go back to these two data files that you may remember that uh, have each one of them have a rectangle in them. So we have these two rectangles. And if you recall, if we were to intersect these two rectangles, we would end up with this result right here. Uh, we also counted the number of input features and the output features, which will be significant here in a moment. So remember, this is the intersect operator. We had two different uh, input files two different features that were input, one in each file. We ended up with one output file with one feature in it. So let's take a look at how the union operation would be different. What would be the difference between uh, this and a union operation? Well, remember that uh, the intersect operation was all about logical and. We talked about logical and when we talked about the intersect operation. When we talk about union, we're talking about logical or. Okay, so we're associating the union tool with logical OR. Say that I want all areas that are A or B. That's when you reach for the union tool. So if you were to union these two data sets, here's the union, this would be the output. Here's what you would get with the union of these two results. It's very different. I end up with one output file again. There's one output result. But this time it has five features in them, uh, in it. So I had two input features, uh, one in each input file. But then in this output file, I've got five features, one, two, three, four, five. So I've got uh, four features that were created from the areas that uh, where these rectangles did not overlap. And then I have one that was created from the area where they did overlap. Let's take a look at another example with some different geometry. Let's look at this example with these gray rectangles and uh, the yellow circle. Uh, the union of these two uh, files would produce this output. Uh, these are all areas that are the gray rectangles or that yellow circle. Notice again how the union slices up the geometry here. I had a total of three input features to this operation, two input files, one that's got two uh, features and one that had one feature, uh, but then my output here contains five features given this geometrical configuration. Uh, just to quickly mention as well, just as you can intersect more than two files at a time, you can also union more than one, uh, more than two data files at the same time as well. I need all areas that are A or B or C or D. No problem. You can input all of those and take care of uh, the union uh, all at once. No problem. So let me talk to you a little bit more about logical OR because this comes up a lot in geoprocessing and it also comes up in a lot of other places in GIS including when you're writing SQL statements for uh, selection by attribute. So I always pay a little bit of attention here to specifically talking about what logical OR means. Logical OR is also known as inclusive OR. Okay, inclusive OR. And logical OR, or inclusive OR, is the way that a computer understands uh, this term OR. What does it mean for something to be this or that? This is the way that a computer understands it. And it's very important for us to be able to distinguish between AND and OR uh, in the same way that a computer does, because when you're getting ready to issue the computer some instructions for some kind of problem-solving situation, we want to be sure that we're using the terms the same way the computer is going to understand them. So when I'm teaching this in the classroom, I typically hand uh, a student two objects. So in this case, I've got uh, a book here and I've got a marker. So we'll just use this as an example. So what I do is I hand uh, these two objects to a student and I say, okay, so I've got the marker and the book. And then I ask uh, the student, okay, please hand me the marker uh, and the book. And so the student uh, hands me back the book 
and uh, the marker. And then I asked the class, is it true that the student handed me the book and the marker? And of course, the answer is yes. So excellent. Okay, so then I hand them back. Uh, because that well, because that is uh, the logical and I got both of them uh, and that's that's kind of the equivalent of the intersect operation but then I hand them back and I say all right now please hand me the marker uh, or the book so in this, in this this case let's say I get the marker back and so I ask the class okay is it true that uh, I was handed the marker or the book and here again the answer is uh, yes so then I return the object back to the student and I ask one more time, please hand me the marker or the book. But this time I uh, whisper to the student, uh, okay, please hand me both of them. And so the student then hands me both objects. And then I ask the, the class, did I receive the marker or the book? Okay, tricky. Okay, uh, because in common conversation, you might be tempted to say, no, you didn't get the marker or the book. You got uh, the marker and the book. This is something different. Uh, but remember, what we're talking about here is the way that the computer understands and and or. And so the way that the computer uh, interprets this or is inclusive or. Inclusive of what? Inclusive of both conditions. That's what inclusive or means. So had I asked the computer instead of uh, uh, you know, the classroom, uh, did I receive the marker or the book, the computer wouldn't have even hesitated. The computer would have said, yes, you did receive the book or the marker because you received both. And to a computer, or is inclusive of both conditions. That's what we're talking about when we're talking about inclusive or. Uh, and because that's the way that the computer understands or, that is also the way that it applies this or when it's talking about the union operation. We're talking about the union operation. So when we're looking at this simple example of the geometry right here, uh, and we ask for all areas that are A or B, that's the union operation, the union returned this shape right here. Yes, this area here in the middle is both. It is both A and B, but that's okay. Logical or is inclusive of both conditions, and that's why the union operation returned it. So let me make a brief note here about what happens to the attribute table when you conduct uh, a union operation. Uh, basically, what we'll just say uh, for present purposes is that the attribute information of the input data files is copied to the attribute information in the output file. So in this case, uh, these output features here would have whatever attributes were present in the input features that were copied to them, and then this feature here would have the attributes uh, from uh, both of them uh, put into it. So that's how it's manipulating, systematically manipulating the attribute table when you conduct union operations. All right, so I guess that's the union operation on an abstract level, but we also want to come up with examples on a practical level about, what, uh, about when, when the union tool would be appropriate for use. Well, what if I have a data file of all brown bear habitat, and I have a data file that has all black bear habitat, and I want to know all of the areas that are brown bear habitat or black bear habitat. Can be both, no problem. I'm just looking for uh, all areas that are brown bear or black bear habitat. That's the union operation. Conduct a union on this, you'll be easy, it'll be easy to see which areas are which, and which areas have both of them in it. Uh, in another situation, what if we have a city that is looking to establish some green space? And it can do this in a couple of different ways. It's considering uh, putting green space in a flood zone, uh, the flooding, uh, the flood plain of uh, a river or a stream that runs through the city. So thinking, oh, well, we don't need to build on that, so let's use green space. But uh, they could also put green space between two conflicting uh, types of land zoning 
uh, areas. Like for instance, if you have uh, heavy industrial areas and you've got, or industrial areas in general and residential areas, typically you don't want those two sitting right next to each other. So you'd want some kind of, some kind of buffer space between them. So maybe they're thinking about putting green space in between uh, incompatible land uses like that. So where can the new green space in the city go? Well, it can go anywhere potentially that is in the floodplain of the stream or that is um, uh, buffering or, or in between uh, conflicting land zones. So I need, it's okay if it is both in between a conflicting land zone um, and that floodplain. It can be both, no problem. So if I were to union the floodplain with the area between conflicting land zones, I would end up with uh, everything that is uh, the floodplain or the conflicting land zone. That is the union operation. So those are some simple examples, but I'm sure that you could come up with uh, many more in your particular uh, field of interest in your particular subject areas. So just remember that union is logical or. Anytime that you are looking for this or that or that or that, uh, well then you're going to reach for the union tool because that's what's going to return you uh, the result of a logical or operation. All right, I'll see you in the next video.